Are you glad you came this morning? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we praise you and worship you today. We give you praise and honor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now then, I have some, some videos I'd like for you to watch. This one, very interesting. Well, I'll, I'll let you watch the video and then, uh, then I'll, I'll talk to you about it. I was at the time uh, ministering in Australia in the military. So my role was to oversee chaplains on, in, within the Defence Force here in Australia. And I had a job to go down to the south of Australia and work my way up the east coast visiting chaplains. And I started this journey not feeling well. I had a high temperature actually. It wasn't enough to put me in bed, but enough to make me feel a bit uncomfortable. So I did a silly thing. I didn't pray. I went to the pharmacy and bought an over-the-counter typical uh, tablet that probably every house in Australia's got a packet of, very common, you don't need a prescription. I didn't think about it really, I just bought the packet, took a couple. Pretty much every day I was taking these just to keep the temperature down. I got home on a Friday at the end of my journey and realised I was very sick. I was weak, I collapsed into bed, my skin had gone yellow. My eyes were yellow. Actually that night they took me away to hospital in an ambulance and I nearly died that night. My blood pressure was 80 over 40. They did a lot of tests and in the morning the doctors came to me and said, well, we don't know what's knocked your liver out, but your liver has stopped functioning and uh, we've tested it for everything that we know will stop a liver and you're fine. We just don't know what's happened. But unless we can find you a liver in the next two or three days, you probably won't be with us. One of them turned around and he came back over to me and he said, you haven't taken such and such a tablet, have you? I said, sure, I had a high temperature. I bought some from the pharmacy and I took a couple every now and then. I said, well, thank goodness we know what caused your liver to fail, but it's no help to you. We can't do anything for you, but that's what caused it. He said it's the worst cause of liver failure in the Western world. Later on, they came back to me and they said, we'd like to try an experiment. They had all their instruments there to monitor my uh, health as they did this. And just after eight o'clock, they hit the switch. Immediately, I knew I was dying. I could feel it. And then I fell unconscious. I, I went into shock and for about 55 minutes, I was out of my body and I knew I had to concentrate to get back or I never would. And I remember coming back to my body and just sliding into it. I was still very sick, but if you're in your body, at least you can do something about that. At four o'clock in the morning, I felt prompted to, to turn on a small television that was over my bed, the hospital part of the hospital equipment. I, I will never forget the comfort of a voice I heard. I recognised it straight away. It was Brother Copeland. And he, he had a, a friend actually with him, Bill Winston. And the two of them were chatting away about Genesis chapter 2. And uh, it says there that when God made man, he breathed into him and man became a living soul. But actually what they were saying was the rabbis teach it slightly differently. In the Hebrew they say it says that God breathed into man and he became a speaking spirit. My spirit's good. It's not my spirit that's sick, it's just my body. And I'm a speaking spirit. So I, I need to say something here. I dangled my two thin yellow legs that had sort of just deteriorated terribly over the bed. I hardly made it to a bathroom. I got in there. I saw my image for the first time, I think. I, I didn't recognise this yellow, wrinkled, thin, sick man. And that image spoke to me and he, it said, you're going to die. But I knew I was a speaking spirit. And I said, he's the 
health of my countenance. He's the lifter up of my head. And liver, in Jesus' name, you will work 100%. That's all I did. I'd said it. You know, from that moment, my liver started to work. And they, a few days went by, they, they wanted to make sure <laughs> that I was fine. You know, afterwards, the Lord said to me, if you hadn't have spoken, I'd done everything I could. You had to speak. And I learned that. I learned that off the Kenneth Copeland program that morning. It saved my life, got me well, healed me. Seven weeks later, I went to my own doctor and she had a report on her desk, looked about two inches thick. She's on a swivel chair and she turned around and she looked at me and she said, do you know something? Your liver is 100%. Exactly the words that I'd spoken. You get what you say. The word of faith is something that God gave us to change our circumstances so that we live the blessed life. Come on, give the Lord praise for that. Now, I, I want to point out something to you. The prophet Micah said, a child will be born in Bethlehem. 715 years later, it came to pass, which meant that that word had to command armies. It had to move people. It had to make sure that Caesar decided to tax people in their hometowns yes. so they would have to go to Bethlehem. They were not poor people. That's not why Jesus was born in a manger. He was supposed to have been born there, but that's not the reason why. Poor people don't pay taxes. You understand that? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Amen. There's nothing to pay. It was because the hotel was full. No room in the inn. I wanted you to see the command authority yes. of that spoken word. Now, many, many years ago, a woman didn't know the Lord Jesus, sitting on her hospital bed side, just sitting there after the doctors had come in and had told her that she's terminal, she has to die. They walked out of the room. Now, I want you to remember that Pastor Hulk turned on that television set or he'd have died. He'd have gone right on to heaven, which is a stunning thing. Amen. But he did not. If he had turned it on and cartoons had been on, he'd have died. <laughs> Amen. This woman she said, she, she said, Brother Copeland, my arm just went like that and I turned on the radio. She said, I did not want to listen to the radio. That's the last thing I wanted to hear. It was during the years that, that I was on radio uh, five days a week. I remember when I said it, I thought, man, that is strong. It just came on me while I was making that broadcast. What, weeks and weeks before? Bill and I had made those broadcasts. We weren't, that wasn't a live broadcast. We made that weeks and weeks before. And it had to be timed right at that moment. That's what I wanted to get over to you. Right at the right moment for him to hear speaking spirit. Yes. Which by the way comes out of the Chumash and the study of the Chumash. Anyway, I said, you're not sick and you're not going to die. And I remember thinking, man, that was strong, but I just went on about, you know. She said, uh, she said uh, when she turned it on, I said that. You're not sick. 
and you're not going to die. And she said, I'm not. <laughs> so she listened to the rest of the broadcast. And then she began to listen to other broadcasts. She sent somebody down to the little shop there in the hospital to get her a Bible. Didn't have a Bible. They, they bought a Bible and brought, she began to read her Bible. And by the time she was testifying to glory in me about it, she said, I can now say that I'm born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. My husband born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. Both of my children are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. He's got a new job and we're prospering more than we've ever prospered in our lives. Amen. Amen. That anointing. But the biggest thing here is God's holy timing. Isn't that, you know, oh, does that thrill you like it does me? And I, I, I know I've, I, I've experienced it again and again and again and again and again, but I want you to begin to expect to experience it. That's one of the reasons you needed to see that. Begin to expect unusual things happening because you're a partner to the word of faith. But now you're going to have to believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Amen. Amen. And you can just turn over there to the book of Micah and read that, that scripture and say, uh-huh. And that happens to me all the time. <laughs> we began saying that. Uh, Pastor George and Pastor Terry began to teach that in church. And we began to say it. And we get a big testimony in there and everybody says, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> Miracles happen to me all the time. God's timing happens to me all the time. Think about God stopping me out there in front of the LRC. What if Oral had been out of town? Wouldn't have happened. Of course, God would have worked some other way, but the timing was perfect. The man brought the check by my dad's office. I called him right at the right moment. Coincidence? You know, it's a strange thing that now that I'm walking by faith, the coincidences are in my favor <laughs> instead of just sinking my ship. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. This one is one of my favorite testimonies of all. And this woman and her family now are very close friends of our family and very close to my, my daughter, Kelly. And uh, well, I'll let her tell you the story. I'm an omen. I'm from Holland. Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Well, where do I start? It turned our family upside down. I'm here because of uh, Gloria Copeland Healing School, which I followed and brought forth a big miracle in our life. When Desmond was born, uh, he was a baby who cried a lot, but I had no example or anything to compare with other babies because he was the first grandchild, the first baby in the whole family. And uh, this went on for two, three years. In Holland, when you are four years old, you have to go to school. You don't, we don't have homeschooling in Holland. So from the first day I brought him to school, it was really a battle, I would say a fight. And then within a few weeks, uh, his teacher uh, came to me and she said, uh, it's, I think it's a good plan to, let, to test him because uh, he doesn't connect with anyone in the class and he doesn't look at me and he is acting very weird. And uh, so we did. They didn't even uh, test him that long, but she said, uh, I, I can be 100% sure that he has a severe form of autism. So my husband and I were there and we thought, okay. And we said, how, how are we gonna fix this? And she looked at us and she said, well, 
don't make any plans for his future because he will never be a doctor or a lawyer. Um, maybe if everything goes right, you can uh, put him in a home where he's with other artists, uh, boys and girls, and under guidance, but don't make any plans for his future. So at that moment, our world kind of collapsed. He was put into a special school, which was connected to a psych psychiatric center. And it was so bad. We had someone at night uh, during dinner uh, who helped us just to feed him because my husband is uh, six foot four and he couldn't hold Desmond. He was so strong and uh, it was crazy. And then I came in a sermon of a church and um, the pastor asked me uh, who I was and I introduced myself as Annette with the son that had autism, that has autism. He said, God can heal that. So I went back and I got a hold of Gloria Copeland's healing school. And on the tapes, she was telling about Jesus, the healer. She was telling about faith. She was telling about what's impossible with man is possible with Jesus. She was telling about how much God loves us and how Jesus, the healer, can heal all. Because I read the word and I had so much of this healing teaching, my faith became stronger and stronger and I was so determined. I kept saying, you are healed in the stripes of Jesus. You will have a good future. You will be totally restored just as God has planned it. I saw him going to normal school to do a normal job, to get married, all the impossibilities. He was in his bus and I knocked on the window and I waved and he was always like this. He never looked, he was always like this. So in the afternoon he came back and he got out of his bus and I opened the front door and suddenly he looked at me and he said, mom, now you have to remember, he never looked at me and he never made one normal sentence. And he said, Mom, why did you put me in this school with these strange kids? They act really weird. They lay on the floor. They don't talk. They don't look at you. <laughs> and I was, wait, I, I, I ran to the phone. I called my husband, I said, you better come home. Desmond is healed. So it took more than two and a half years without seeing anything. And suddenly he came in healed. I cannot tell people often enough to never ever give up. When he was diagnosed, they said, he will never be healed. He was healed. He will never be a lawyer, but he is gonna be a lawyer. He will never marry. He has a wife. So everything the doctor said, everything the therapist said, can't be. God said, yes. Where they said impossible, God said, possible. Come on. <laughs> you don't ever quit. Amen. You don't ever give up. Amen. 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 You just stay in the word and you believe it and you say it and you say it and you believe it and you believe it and you say it and you say it and you believe it. And more times than not, it will look like no change at all, just like it did with Desmond. For over two years, no change at all. But he left home that morning in one condition and came back that afternoon a totally different boy. Amen. And he is an attorney at law today. Glory to God. With a family. Glory to God. But that's one of the most classic things. And, and, um, and now she and I, my daughter Kelly are very close friends and they, they communicate a lot. And um, I, I think it's just classic that he came home and said, Mom, <laughs> why do you put me 
in that school with those strange <laughs> kids. <laughs> See, spiritual things are from the inside out. It had to get in his spirit. And then that healing began working its way from the inside out. And then as it got into his brain, it had to completely rewire all the sensors of his brain. And it did it like that. Yes. Glory to God. Is that exciting or what? Yes. Many years ago, Gloria and I went to Palm Springs, California to uh, with Oral and Evelyn Roberts, spent the night with them there. And he said, now in the morning, I, I want you to help me write my partner letter. Well, I was a partner and I got his letters all the time. Now I communicated with my partners and I, I made partner reports of the meetings that we were on and so forth. But I, I wasn't committed to a letter every month. And uh, we were sitting there at his desk about eight o'clock in the morning. He, uh, and I mean, he's, he's behind his desk. I'm sitting at the end of the desk, not in front. And he's turned his chair around. Where's closest from you to me? He said, what is that? I said, it, it's the word of God. He said, what is that? Well, now I know I'm had, you know, a, a, a Bible. I mean, come on. And he threw that Bible at me. And it did just like it did him. Hit me right in the chest on a whole lot harder than I threw it at you. And it, he hit me in the chest of that. He said, Letters. Letters. And they're just as anointed. I mean, he is shouting at me. They're just as anointed today as the day they were written. Yes. And of course, he's referring to the New Testament. Yes. And it got on the inside of me. Oh. And he said, are you ready to commit? I said, yes, I am. And I've been writing a partner letter every 30 days since. Now the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, you're not writing this letter to get your own needs met. You're writing this letter to help your partners get their needs met. Amen. And he said, every time you write it, you go back and read it again and you think about what you were thinking when you wrote that sentence or wrote that paragraph. Are you thinking, if I word that this way, maybe they'll give more than if I worded it the other way. He said, tear it up right there and start all over again. Well, for the first, oh, I'd say the first uh, two years, <laughs> I didn't tear all of them up, but I tore a lot of them up. Because I'm, I'm, I'm renewing my mind and it didn't say it in the letter, but I remembered what I thought. So I'd have to go back and rewrite it. Thank God I haven't had to rewrite one in a long, long time. Amen. So I, I wanted you to hear that story and understand my heart. I've had people say, uh, do you actually write the letter yourself? <laughs> no computer is going to write my letter. I don't even know how to use a computer, much less make the thing write my letter. <laughs> and I think, I think about it a lot. And, and, you know, and so does Gloria. We'll just be going along. She'll say, I've got a good idea for a partner letter. I said, what? <laughs> you know, and because we, we think about our partners all the time. 
Another thing I want you to take away from this meeting is the volume of prayer that's going up for you. Yes. The thing that I heard Oral Roberts say in 1967 in that partner meeting that struck me with such a force. He said, I will pray for you every day. You will never be without prayer as long as I live. Amen. I can say the same thing except, except you have staff praying for you. You have families praying for you. You have other partners praying for you. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Every time you send an offering, every time you put something in an offering envelope that has your name on it, I want you to know you are prayed for. Glory to God. You're prayed for in the United States. You're prayed for in Australia. You're prayed for in, in, in Germany. You're prayed for in the UK. You're prayed, my dear Lord, in Canada. Amen. There is a unified army of prayer all over this world praying for our partners. And I want you to know that. It doesn't do you any good, though, if you don't take advantage of it. You have to read the letter. Not only that, it's important that you know to use the advantage that you have in agreement prayer. I'll never forget this story, and then I'll play this for you. A young woman in Dallas, Texas, partner, Standing at a signal light, downtown Dallas, she stepped off the curb and pow, she broke her ankle. Oh, she said it was, she said it was so excruciating. She, just, she, she could hardly, and she just, she just when, it, when, it, when it happened, she just hollered, oh, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. So she stopped trying to get out of the street, across the street. She said, I agree with the Copelands. I agree with the Copelands. They prayed today, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, that I be made whole spirit, soul, and body, and body, and body, and body, and body, and body. And she was totally healed before she got to the other side of the street. Now, it wouldn't do any good for me to put that on the bottom of that letter. <laughs> Amen. And, and you not be aware of it or not paying attention to it and not use what's available to you. I was in Venezuela and uh, I'd, I'd come back from the meeting that morning into the hotel and there was a young man, Brother Copeland, Brother Copeland. He ran over there to me. He said, I am your partner. And he said, mi hijo, mi niño, my little boy. He is so sick, man. And he said, he looked like he's going to die. I don't know, I will pray for him. But he said, I am a partner. And he said, Brother Copeland and Sister Gloria, they pray for me. And they pray for me every day. And so I just say, Jesus, I, re I, 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 I agree with Brother Copeland today that my boy is healed. And he said, thank you, Brother Copeland. He said, Jesus, heal my boy. <laughs> he took advantage of it. If you don't get anything other than that out of this service, I want you to take that home with you. It'll work. Glory to God. Actually, that's what Pastor Hawk did. He agreed with what Bill and I were preaching that morning on television when he turned that TV set on. Because at that point, had he thought about it, he could have said, huh. No use me having this. 
Copeland prayed for me today, he wouldn't have me even look at it on the TV if he'd have thought about it. I don't know whether he was a partner at that time or not, but had it been so, where he could have just said, I agree with Brother Kenneth, just took that letter and just read those things off the bottom. I agree that, I agree with that, I agree with that, I agree with that. He prays this for me every day, glory to God. But see, I do most of that praying in tongues, not all of it. And I make all the rounds. I pray for all of the international offices. I pray for all of my partners in all of these areas. And glory to God. Hallelujah. You're in it. Amen. Watch this. Kenneth Copeland learned the importance of letter writing from his spiritual father, Oral Roberts. Brother Roberts helped him to understand that the Bible is made up primarily of letters and that they are just as anointed now as the day they were first written. That day, Brother Copeland made a lifelong commitment to write a letter every month to address the spiritual needs of his partners. I commit this to you. I write a partner letter every month. I pray for you every day. I put scriptures there on the bottom of that partner letter. And I put those on there specifically for your benefit so that you can go back and, and read those and make them a part of your prayer life. Kenneth Copeland's promise to his partners has led to over 375 individual letters being written since 1986. The U.S. Post Office mailed 3.7 million partner letters in 2018 alone. These powerful messages from God's heart minister life to your spirit and strengthen you in your daily walk of faith. I'm a partner for about um, probably five years now, and I enjoy his product, especially his monthly letters. I wait for them in the mail. I just love those. They're so very inspiring. And he always hits it right on. Whatever I'm going through, that is the word for that month. And I keep that letter. But I will write them to help them get their needs met to help them prosper, to help them grow in the Lord and grow in faith and grow in prayer and go from religion to reality, praise God. Praise God. All right. When David's men were on that force march after the army that had stolen all their people and all everything that they had. And, and God guided them to them at a hard forced march and they had just come out of a campaign. They were worn out when they started that one. Well, they went after him. God said, pursue and you know David. <laughs> Boy, he was after him. And they caught him. And they did business. They got back everything and then some. There were some men that were so weary, it would have been dangerous for them to go across that river and enter into that fight. So they stayed behind, behind the goods and, and stood by the, the quartermaster of what they did have, what they had with them when they were on that campaign before. Well, after the fight. There were men there that said, now wait a minute, wait just a minute. We're not gonna divide with these guys that stayed behind and just didn't do anything but just, just sit there and watch the stuff. David said, no, no, that's not right. He said, after all, it was God that gave us this victory. Without, without God, we were lost. And he made it an ordinance that day God did in Israel. Amen. You divide the spoil equally. And I got some news for you. For every person that's healed, 
every person born again, every marriage put back together, every family through the preaching of this ministry, every heavenly and earthly blessing coming to Gloria, coming to me, coming to Pastor, coming to Terry, coming to any of us in this ministry, our partners receive exactly the same heavenly and earthly blessing and reward. If you receive a prophet, Jesus said, because he is a prophet, then you receive the prophet's reward. Amen. The apostle Paul wrote to the church at Philippi and they were partners. He uses the word partnership in there. Amen. But it was translated fellowship, but it's translated partnership uh, in, in the book of Luke. Same word. And he said, you are partakers of my grace. You're the only church that communicated with me in giving and receiving, you're the only one. Not that I desire a gift on my part, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. He said, you're partakers in my grace in bonds. Well, hey, that, these, that church in Philippi started when that jail broke up in that earthquake that didn't happen anywhere but in the jail. And the jailer became pastor of the church to whom he wrote the letter. And he said, you're partakers of my grace, my anointing in bonds. Don't you know those guys that were in there that night and they couldn't move under the power of that glory. And they'd been hearing Paul and Silas pray and sing and praise so loud they all heard it and they couldn't move because of the glory. And they thought, you mean I have his anointing on me? And in the confirmation of the gospel, what's the confirmation? Signs and wonders following. Last chapter of the book of Acts. Amen. Amen. The man had signs and wonders, right? There are signs and wonders in this ministry. If you're a partner to this ministry, they ought to be happening in your life because you have access to the same anointing. Amen. 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 I said, amen. amen. And then the crowning blow, the crowning word. He didn't say God will supply all your need. He didn't say, your God will supply all your need. He said, my God. On the level of an apostle. You may be a school teacher anointed to teach school. But Kenneth E. Hagin separated me into the office of the prophet 42 years ago. And I have enjoyed the anointing and, and, and teaching on that level instead of just the teaching anointing that I've ministered in for 10 years before that. Amen. Amen. But hey, which is more important? The one that preached the sermon or the one that bought my new suit? <laughs> well, it's not all that new, but I don't care when I got it, you bought it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Yes. Glory to God. Can you see the reality and the truth of it? But you have to exercise your faith in it. This is a, the, a report of this ministry of the year 2018. And as a partner to this ministry, Every soul, every success we have, you share equally. Amen. 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 You share equally. Yes. So pay really close attention. There's some pretty astounding figures in this, in this report. 2018, the year of the big 18 the nine fruit of the Spirit and the nine gifts of the Spirit. 
we are believers and partners with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Without you, there is no we, for it's because of you and your commitment that we together play a vital role in the work of this ministry. As partners, we believe that we can make a difference. This is a report of your partnership of faith, prayer, and financial seed sown in 2018. The purpose to mature believers worldwide in the use of faith began with the Ministers' Conference. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland led the way, ministering to leaders from all over the country. Beginning with Branson, KCM held victory campaigns throughout the U.S. with one mission, minister the word of faith, teach believers who they are in Christ Jesus, take us from the milk of the word to the meat so that we can experience the fullness of the blessing. We're able to get this job done because you've believed, you've prayed, and you've sown your financial seed. Why? Because we belong there. The 2018 Southwest Believers Convention, our largest faith-based gathering of the year, where tens of thousands registered from all 50 states and online worldwide. Young and old experienced an immersion of great teaching by anointed speakers. Thousands were set free from sickness and disease and experienced supernatural breakthroughs. Heaven has it on record that every life touched, every soul saved, is credited to every partner that prayed, believed, and sowed. And not to be forgotten, our partners in prison. We visited them too. Why? Because we belong there. When the mission sent KCM to Faith Tabernacle Church in Ogun State, Nigeria, your support touched over 100,000 lives with the gospel. In Israel, your faith and prayers were also represented at the dedication of the U.S. Embassy moved to Jerusalem. In the Republic of Peru, thousands of lives were changed and souls were saved and rededicated as believers received the word with gladness and victory. And finally, in the Solomon Islands, your faith continued to bless. The gospel was preached to over 10,000 people and many were saved. Why? Because we belong there. Back at the revival capital of the world, KCM CEOs and EMIC senior pastors, George and Terry Copeland Pearsons, wielded your faith and prayers by raising up families of believers to be co-laborers together with KCM partners, discipling them intensely in the Word of God and teaching them an uncommon faith. At Miracles on the Mountain, your faith supported powerful signs of healings and miracles with healing evangelist Billy Burke. Through your prayers, Kenneth Copeland and you on the mountain held a live TV taping with daytime teaching sessions and more. Your seed provided the men of EMIC a special time of galvanizing faith at the Built to Last Men's Conference. This blessing also supported the women of EMIC with a time of refreshing and great strengthening at the Radiant Women's Conference. According to God's promise to Abraham, EMIC laid hold of the blessing by blessing Israel during the annual Night to Honor Israel event. Through your faithful partnership, construction of the brand new Student Life Center was completed debt free, making the way to add a brand new available voice. The Kenneth Copeland Bible College, a world-class institution of biblical higher education for skillful instruction in the word of faith. Many anointed men and women preached at EMIC in 2018, taking your faith prayers and seeds sown into all the world, even to the highest office in the land. Behind the scenes, the KCM staff put your faith, prayers, and financial seed into action, faithfully ensuring Brother Copeland's monthly partner letter reached every partner right on time, delivering with excellence the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast, which taught how to operate skillfully in God's Word, producing the BVOV and network, 24 hours of free word-based programming led by some of the most dynamic ministries of our day. And when believers needed the truth to make informed decisions during the coverage of the 2018 midterm election, the KCM staff stepped up to the plate yet again. This is your partnership in motion, honoring the commitment to not cease to serve and pray over every partner, ensuring there will never be a day that a KCM partner is without prayer. Why? because we belong there. And as disasters hit, your prayers and financial support become acts of mercy and kindness. This is who we are, believers, partners in faith, in prayer, 
and partners in giving. Partners with KCM, EMIC, and just as importantly, with each other. This is the honor and blessing we believe in to obey the commandment written and serve each other in love, giving honor to our Lord. This powerful work of faith stretches around the globe with seven international offices worldwide. Canada, Latin America, Europe, Germany, Ukraine, South Africa, and Australia. Also, your financial seed supported over 120 ministries, making a difference across eight countries. This is who we are, a new breed of believers, Casey and partners in the work of faith. We do not accept sickness nor disease as normal. We will not accept poverty and lack, but we will rise up in the midst of it, taking our stand over it by declaring the blessing in the name of Jesus. We not only have a voice, we are a voice, a voice of victory everywhere we go. Why? Because we belong there. And in 2019, we declare. 2019, the year of abundant harvest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everything that's going on in just a few minutes from now, we are going to invite those of you who would like to become a partner to come to the altar. Brother Copeland will pray over you and pray over all of our partners. Let me see the hands of partners once again. Let me see your hands. Oh, look at this. What a sight that is, David. David is the director of this office here in Australia. What, what, is, what is important about partnership to you? Well, personally, I'm first and foremost a partner. I just happened to find my calling in partnership to be the director. It means so much to me and my family. And I think the, the longer we're partners, the, the deeper it gets. And I, I feel the same way that Brother Copeland uh, is the custodian of the mission. God gave it to him. I feel the same calling to that mission. It's as much my responsibility, my part as his. And I believe all our partners think the, believe the same. It's their part. That's why it's called partnership. Right, exactly. Everyone does their part. Yeah. Jesus comes back. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So it's, it's a big part of our ministry. It's not a side thing. It's not a, a way of raising funds, as Brother Copeland said. For us, it's a calling. It's a ministry. And we're here to serve those people. And it's a great honour to serve the partners. And we want to thank you and your oh, team you, for all that you do here in Australia. Would you please give them a great hand? Australia, the Pacific Rim, and thank I, you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. We're honored. Take a look at this video. It's very quick, but it's talking about what partnership is all about. Just take a look and we'll be right back with you. These are the days of signs and wonders, folks. Come on, get in it. You need to be a part of the supernatural outpouring of Almighty God. Partnership is much more than being on a mailing list. You can say that partnership is a bridge that connects two sides. On one side, you have individuals, businesses, ministries, and on the other side, you have the work of the ministry, the rewards for the work of the ministry, and the ministry's anointings. The bridge of partnership rests upon two fundamental pillars. One pillar is prayer and the other is finances. These two pillars are designed to benefit you as a partner just as much as the ministry. The benefits are a two-way street. From your side, you pray for Kenneth and Gloria, the staff, and for God's anointing to be upon the work of the ministry. Coming back to you is the commitment of Brother Copeland and Sister Copeland, along with the KCM staff, to pray for you every single day. In addition to your prayers, when you sow your financial seed, you're exercising the full measure of your faith towards the work of the ministry. This opens the door to the rewards of partnership. 1 Samuel 30 verses 24 in the Amplified says, For as is the share of him who goes into the battle, so shall his share be who stays by the baggage. They shall share alike. It doesn't matter who does the preaching or who supports the preacher. Both activities are sacred to God, and the rewards will be the same for both. Rewards like the healing anointing, the anointing for prosperity and financial increase, and the anointing of victorious faith. So on behalf of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, we invite you to prayerfully consider becoming a partner with us. As written in Philippians 4.17, not because we desire a gift, 
but rather that fruit may abound to your account. Standing in faith for one million strong. Whatever it takes, it's time for the team. It's time for partners being partners everywhere. Amen. Let's all stand up together. Brother Copeland, if you'd please come. Brother Jerry, Terry, why don't you come on up here and join us as well. And if there's anyone in here today and you're not a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries and you would like to become one, I invite you to come to this altar right now where we can pray over you and officially receive you as partners of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. As they come, give them a great hand, everybody. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Just make your way to the front. How exciting this is. David, how exciting it is that we have new Australian partners and other partners from around the world that are coming to this altar right now. Yes, sir. New people added to the team. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you guys can move in here, just gather, gather in, and we will pray for you and pray over you and receive you into this great ministry of everything that's taking place, everything that's happening. Now, let me, let me encourage you about something. <clears throat> Say, well, Brother Copeland, how long are you going to live? <laughs> well, God did not say three score and 10. That has never and should have never been used as the lifespan for a human being on the earth. God didn't say that. That was a curse that came on the people in that desert for being disobedient to God. He said in Genesis 6, 3, the days of man shall be 120 years. Medical science says the human body should live to be 120 years. God began to deal with me about that a number of years ago and talked to me about it and talked to me about it and talked to me about it and it began to grow on the inside of me. And uh, I won't go into all the details, but uh, one thing he said to me, he said, Kenneth, that's just as much my word as by my stripes you were healed. And uh, he said, I need that in the earth. He said, I have anointings from, he just took me up 10 years at a time, 10 years at a time. And each year I was, I learned more. I was more anointed in 10 years than I was 10 years before. And he said, now I have anointings from 90 to 100 and I don't have any of them in the earth. He said, I have anointings from, from 100 to 120. And he said, they're not available. And he said, in these last days, I need it. And he didn't tell me to do it. He said, will you do that for me? I, I stood up and stood to attention. I said, sir, yes, sir. I'm yours to command and I will do it. I'm willing and I'm obedient and I will do it. I said, I can't do it, but in me, you can and will. Amen. So I just wanted you to know that's become a mandate for me. And um, I'm in the exercise room and I'm working out and then I'm doing all the things that, that uh, um, I should have done when I was a kid <laughs> and didn't, was disobedient about it. But I'm going to be here for 37 more years. So just get ready for Praise it. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. After that, you're on your own, Bubba. Because <laughs> I'm out of here at the end of that time. Thank you. Lord. Brother Copeland, would you pray over them, please? I would be delighted. <clears throat> Thank you. Father, I receive these new partners. And I pray and I bless my longtime partners. And I give you honor and glory. Thank you for all that you're doing in this ministry. I praise you. And I open this ministry to our new partners. 
And I'm asking you, Father, for all of my partners that have family outside the kingdom of God, I'm asking you to, to send laborers across their path with the word of their salvation, that they just come running into the kingdom. Glory. Any of my partners have children that out in the world, some of them may not even know where they are. I'm asking you, Father, to cause their children to contact them the day I bind you, Satan. You desist in your maneuvers Thanks. in the name of Jesus Thanks. to keep Thanks. them out of the kingdom of God. I pray the Lord of the harvest send laborers across their path with the word of their salvation. The word, you know to whom they'll listen. Send that person across their path with that word. And all of my partners, Father, that don't have a job, but they want a job, I'm asking you to get them in touch with the best job they've ever had That's in their right. life, Praise beyond God. their wildest dreams. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you for dropping that in my spirit. The prayer power that's in this room right now, the anointing that's in this room. I break the drought over this nation. In the name of Jesus, praise God. I take authority praise over you, God. you drought demon. You fall on your Thank face you. in the presence of God and you eat the dirt that you were supposed to eat. You get up and get out, ministering angels, stir up the rain, stir up the rain, stir up the rain. Stir up the rain. And instead of forest fires, we'll have the fire of the Holy Ghost Glory to God. in the great Southland of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. Praise you, my heavenly Father. Thank you. And all of my partners that are employed by someone else. I'm asking you to give them raises. I'm asking you to give them favor. I'm asking you to give them special place right on up to and including owning that company if that's your will. Thank you, Father. So much so that people come to them and say, I don't see how you do it. And they'll smile and say, his name is Jesus. <laughs> and all of my partners that own their own businesses, oh my, 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 my. I see it, I see it. Not a trickle, not a stream, not a river, but a flood. A flood of finances. A flood yes. of partners yes. for their business. A flood, a flood, praise flood. God. Thank you, sir. And all of my partners that are in the military, all of my partners that are first responders, I'm asking you to give them divine protection Praise God, the blessing of the Lord is around them. All of my partners that are police officers, you will tell them exactly where the perpetrators are and you will protect them at all times and they will get so good at it that they'll be promoted in department after department after department after department until they are department heads and praise God. Praise you for it. And oh, dear Lord, I thank you for all of my partners that are in the ministry. Oh, God bless them. All that pastor churches, oh, fill those churches with strong people of God and grow the church, grow it, just grow it in power and strength. 
until the anointing becomes so strong that people begin to go to church seven days a week because of the signs and the wonders and the glory that's happening there. And it'll spread out all over the world. If you can get to that church, you can get healed. If you can get to that church, you can prosper. If you can get to that church, they'll teach you things that'll show you how to live, glory to God, and not die. And all of my partners in field ministries, oh my, give them partners and great shall be the prosperity of their ministries. And I pray that they surpass this ministry and become greater indeed. And Father, I pray this, Gloria and I prayed it in the very beginning. And I've prayed it in every partner service since in order for my partners to hear it come out of my mouth. Gloria and I have prayed and committed to keep this ministry pure. To keep it pure on the Word of God. To keep it pure financially and to keep it pure sexually. And for all of these things, the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and he adds no sorrow. Pray it, I believe I receive it, and I declare it publicly for all to see and hear and to know. I receive you into this ministry. I receive you into my family. I receive you as part of what God is doing in the earth. Through Kenneth Copeland Ministries worldwide. And I thank you. I thank you for trusting us. Amen. And I've commit to you this. No one, not one time, has this ministry ever given anybody's name and address to anybody. We don't sell it. We don't give it. The United States Senate tried to get it and we wouldn't let them have it. (laughs) Amen. I guard it with my life as much as I trust other ministries, they can't have it. I committed it, took communion over it in the very beginning. Your name and your address is a sacred trust to me. If somebody comes on social media and says, brother and sister Copeland really need an extra $5,000. Here's the answer. (laughs) Words just fail me. (laughs) That's a scam. We don't do that. And we'll never do that. Amen. Be blessed and know this, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Somebody shout amen.